I'm not trying to set a mood with the candlelight in the dark room. <laughs> the light in my bedroom burnt out like two nights ago. So this is just the best I got. This things I like is probably going to be my favorite because this is an album I proselytize for. Uh, a bucket list that I have in life is to introduce someone to this album that likes it at all, let alone as much as me. <laughs> it's my third favorite of all time. And it, like once you get that high, they're all my favorite. It's just for different reasons. And for an album to evoke these kind of emotions or feelings, this is by far the best. Not only the best, the only album I think that I've ever had this relationship with. It is called Mount Erie by the Microphones, which is now known as the band Mount Erie. Uh, <laughs> ran by Phil Elverum, who is probably most well known still for the album. It, not it was hot um, for the album The Glow Part 2. But recently he came back more into the mainstream. Mainstream, it's like mid brow, I guess. I don't know. He's in Pitchfork a lot. I think The Glow Part 2 was album of the year back in 2001 there. Um, really just took off in popularity with his album uh, A Crow Looked at Me which I'm not going to get into that album at all you can look it up on your own if you want to I'm not talking about that one, I'm talking about this one so I remember when I was a kid I was staying up late with my best friend at the time and he told me, you know what's my biggest fear this guy was a, a church kid like three days a week and he said my biggest fear is that God's real and I was like what do you mean, that doesn't make sense that should be like a relief <laughs> And he said, yeah, but he can see everything that you're doing. He could do anything to you, and you're powerless to stop him. And I thought, that's silly. I didn't take it seriously. I didn't quite understand that until I heard this album. I also remember I grew up in kind of Farmville part-time. My grandparents, who I was always over at their house, lived on a farm. And I remember they lived right in front of woods, a huge stretch of woods. Oh, it was getting dark when I was out playing with my cousin. And I looked in the woods and I thought I saw this kind of like um, Salem Witch Trial sketch era devil, just a dark figure running through the woods. Of course I didn't. But when you're like eight or nine, impressionable, and watching stuff you probably shouldn't be like I was, it was really spooky. So this, this album begins with a 17 minute track. And there's only five on the whole album and they're both fairly lengthy, but the first is by far the longest. I'm going to say it's roughly seven to eight minutes of kind of a drum and French horn solo. Now, I think this is off for a lot of people. I think when I recommend this album, that is the reason they don't finish it. And I get it. It's a lot. I like it. It reminds me, it's like chugging along. You hear the horn blowing. It reminds me of like a train, essentially, which I used to walk in the woods alongside a train track like Stand By Me or something all through high school. I loved it. It was my favorite place to just walk and think of book ideas. So it's really cool for me. And I always think when I listen to it, not only that, but if I saw Mount Airy live and it was just a dark room and you hear the drums and the horn and maybe a curtain up or there's just like an empty stage and you hear that, it goes completely black. You hear that, you don't see the drum or anything. And then after about seven, eight minutes, the opening lines come in which is like a see me and then that's basically sets up the verses for this track it's, it's see me blank and see me blank and it's really creepy stuff a lot of the lyrics were all like dying in the woods um you know realizing that you were dead i always think of it as a someone who died in the woods and their spirit is lost in those same woods i don't know what the album's about i don't want to it's enigmatic and that is to me is much more interesting <laughs> It makes me return to it much more just to like think about what it could mean rather than objectively what Phil was going through when he wrote it. And, but yeah, I think about just Dark Room and then as soon as Phil comes in with the opening line, like it just like a spotlight shines right on him. And I think that would be one of the coolest live moments ever. I don't think it's ever been done. It probably has. Maybe. I don't know. I hope it has. But I also hope it hasn't because that would mean I came up with it. Sorry, I'm, I actually took notes for once. I'm not driving so I can... I can cheat, which is kind of pathetic. I used to be able to go for like 12 minutes without looking at any notes, but it's been a while. So what's really amazing is that the narrative of this album and the perspective of so much of it makes you feel powerless. It makes you feel weak. Like 
is Blair Witch Project. You're in the tent at night and something is shaking it that you don't know. It describes this wooly, godlike kind of figure. I, I almost picture it as a, a much creepier version of the, the deer god from um, Princess Mononoke. Just this very elemental, hairy, scary thing that could do anything it wants to you. And there's um, a guest verse on it that's extensive with this electronic, just this crazy harsh electronic atmosphere going on with these gasps and grunts and um, hand clapping. It, it's very, it, it's so fascinating to me how Phil Verne bl blends this folk, um, acoustic guitar, simple kind of things. He has um, almost Gregorian chants on this album. Uh, sing on parts like a chorus, a choir of other people, almost summoning this figure. And then he'll go into this, it, you know, yeah, have the folk, then lo-fi, and then hold on this electronic thing, or these huge explosion of like metal guitars, but yet it's always kind of cohesive. He always keeps the album tied together. <laughs> Let's see, here's some lyrics that I wrote down when I was listening to and decided to do this video. Oh, what do I care now that the Black Knight has seized me? On a mountain's mane, I climb to my claim, and I am aimless, alone, and unraveling. And, and that's the, the tone of the whole album. It's just complete darkest night, and you're in the woods, and you don't know what just broke a stick, but you know something is out there, which is another favorite moment of the album, where it's a call and response from this female vocalist, where she asks, you know, do you really think there's some, but something out there? And he goes, mm-hmm, and it goes on a few times into a sort of chorus. And speaking of the acoustic chorus, on the title track, there's this kind of, it's not, it's not instrumental, but it might as well be, because the, the chord progression after this god figure kind of speaks and threatens you is one of my favorite instrumental moments of all time. I, I can't get over it. I could just listen to it for an album's worth of time. And I'm just going to conclude this with the first time I heard this album, I had moved into a place that was a, in the woods. You could literally go deer hunting from your car. And we lived right by a boar farm. And I was walking listening to this album, I thought, what if I ran into a wild pig <laughs> and it like had like red eyes it was like um I don't know if you've ever read this story it's really great you should read it if you haven't Pig's Blood Blues by Clive Barker I, I think of that every time I listen to this album every time I listen to this album whether I'm on the bus coming home from work like I was today or I'm in my bedroom or walking around I'm lost in the middle of the woods and I cannot think of another album ever that puts me in such a specific frame of mind immediately every time. Those are the things I like about Mountaineering by Microphones.